is sitting the new smoking. Recently, major news outlets such as CBC, CNN, and even the New York Times have reported that prolonged sitting is very dangerous for our health. So today, we'll be taking a closer look at this fire, determining where this concept came from, analyzing the effects of prolonged sitting, reviewing the evidence on this idea, and finally, looking at alternatives to sitting. First of all, where did this idea of sitting come from? Well, excess sitting is not a new phenomenon. In fact, we often joke about those who sit for a long period of time as being couch potatoes. Although we have known for a while that sitting can be bad for our back and our joints, the idea that sitting is as bad as smoking has only gained traction in the last 20 years. Much of the science about the effects of prolonged sitting has come from the research of Dr. Mark Hamilton and Dr. James Levine in the 90s, but has been built on by other researchers since then. Now before we talk about the truth behind the statement, let's talk about what exactly is prolonged sitting. Essentially, prolonged sitting is typically defined sitting for over six hours in a single day. It used to be that older adults were the ones who had more sedentary life, but our overall changes in lifestyle in recent years means that more people now than ever can be classified as prolonged sitting. Prolonged sitting is considered to be a sedentary behavior. Researchers can classify these behaviors, as well as other exercise behaviors, based on their metabolic equivalents, or MET. MET is used as an index of the intensity of our activities. For example, sedentary behaviors like sitting and lying down have a very low metabolic equivalent of 1.0 to 1.5. Light intensity behaviors such as standing, self-care activities, and slow walking have metabolic equivalents around 1.6 to 2.9. High intensity behaviors like running and cycling have high metabolic equivalents anywhere from 6 to 10.0. An MET of 2.0 means that we have to expend twice as much energy to complete the activity compared to something that has an MET of only 1.0. Now, the big question is, is sitting really as bad as smoking? Let's look at the evidence. A systematic review compiled by Philip et al. analyzed 48 longitudinal studies between 96 and 2011 and found that sedentary behavior was associated with several serious diseases, such as obesity, cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, cancer, as well as various mental health disorders. A meta-analysis conducted by Chow et al. looked at studies between 1989 and 2013 with more than 595,000 participants overall. This analysis concluded that higher amounts of daily total sitting time were associated with greater risk of all-cause mortality, specifically 2% for each additional hour of sitting. On the other hand, Pulse Ford et al. performed a study over 16-year follow-up was 5,100 participants, and they found that all-cause mortality was not associated with sitting time at all. Therefore, like any other scientific topic, this idea of sitting is the new smoking has both supporting and contradicting evidence. So the decision that you make should not be from what is reported in news articles, but the actual research studies. Specifically, look at the length of the studies, the number of participants included, and what the majority of the studies conclude. So, is sitting the new smoking? Well, from what we've mentioned so far, it is safe to conclude that sitting does have certain negative effects on our health, but whether it is as bad as smoking is still undecided. While we can't say for sure right now how bad sedentary activity really is, there are still some things that we can do in the meantime to reduce extended periods of sitting. The World Health Organization does state that adults should partake in at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity throughout the week to reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases and diabetes. However, with a busy schedule, it can be difficult to set aside time to meet these amount of physical activity. 
as we discussed earlier. Unintensity activities such as standing or slow walking require twice, if not more, energy than sedentary activities. Therefore, it is best to try to incorporate more of these activities in your day-to-day -day life to mitigate some of the effects of being sedentary. Some strategies include standing and walking throughout the workplace, purchasing a standing variable height or even a treadmill disc desk for your office, and replacing your office chair with a stability or exercise ball can not only help reduce the time spent sitting, but also meet the required amount of physical activity. We hope you implement these strategies and proactive measures to prevent effects of prolonged sitting. For more videos, visit McMaster University's Demystifying Seminar webpage or YouTube page.